Most people think dementia means forgetting things, but what if the first thing that you lose isn't your memory? It's your personality. That's what happens in a disease called frontotemporal dementia. It's a rare but devastating condition that changes who you are before it takes what you know. Since it's Alzheimer's Awareness Month, I wanna highlight that dementia isn't just one disease. There are many, and this one often gets missed for years. Let me tell you about the case I presented yesterday. It was a 50-year-old male. He's a professional, successful, outgoing, funny, and he started acting differently. He started to make inappropriate jokes at dinner, forget his social boundaries, spend money recklessly, and start saying things that he never would have said before. His wife described it to his primary care doctor like, he's still here, but he's not the same person. He was initially sent to psychiatry. They thought maybe it was depression or bipolar or even stress. But months later, things just kept getting worse. He became apathetic, withdrawn, and emotionally flat. And here's the kicker. His memory? Normal. He could remember the date, the president, what he ate for lunch, but his judgment, his empathy, his personality was fading away. Frontotemporal dementia, or also known as FTD, accounts for about 10 to 20% of all dementia cases. It's the most common dementia diagnosed in people under the age of 65. It usually strikes between the ages of 45 and 65, but I've seen cases in patients even younger than that. Men and women are typically affected equally. In about 40% of cases, there's a genetic link. In the U.S., we estimate about 50 to 60,000 people are living with FTD, although it's likely underdiagnosed because it often looks psychiatric in the beginning. So what's really going on inside of the brain? In FTD, there's progressive degeneration of the frontal lobes and the temporal lobes, and that's the areas that control personality, judgment, language, and emotional regulation. And under the microscope, we see deposits of abnormal proteins, usually tau or TDB43, depending on the subtype. Because of where it hits, the early memory pathways in the hippocampus are often spared, at least at first. And so that's why the hallmark symptom isn't forgetfulness, it's a breakdown in behavior, empathy, and decision making. Now there's actually a few subtypes of FTD. Behavioral variant FTD affects personality and social changes. Primary progressive aphasia, also known as PPA, is where language slowly disappears. And FTD with movement disorders is linked to ALS and Parkinsonian symptoms. In behavioral variant FTD, you'll see disinhibition, impulsivity, a loss of empathy, repetitive or compulsive behaviors, and apathy, very similar to the guy that I described at the beginning of the video. Loved ones often describe it as living with a completely different person. And in the language variants, patients may tend to lose the ability to form sentences or understand speech, but they still remember faces and routines. Now, neurologically, you may not see those motor changes early, but as it progresses, gait disturbances, swallowing issues, and speech decline can follow. It's heartbreaking because these patients look physically healthy for years, but mentally, they're slipping away. Diagnosing FTD takes a careful and multi-step workup. We start with labs to rule out reversible causes like thyroid, B12, syphilis, HIV, autoimmune, and metabolic panels. And then we do detailed neuropsychological testing to evaluate judgment, problem solving, and social cognition, which tends to be impaired pretty early. And finally, we use imaging. MRI will show atrophy in the frontal and the anterior temporal lobes, often asymmetric. Like, like in the MRI of our patient, you can see on his imaging atrophy within the frontal lobes bilaterally as well as the temporal lobes. PET scanning or functional imaging can also reveal decreased metabolism in those same regions before obvious shrinkage occurs. And sometimes we'll even use CSF biomarkers or genetic testing if we suspect a hereditary component. Now, it's critical to rule out psychiatric disease because often early FTD can look like depression or mania. Unfortunately, there's no cure for FTD. Treatment focuses mostly on managing the symptoms, supporting the patients and their caregivers. Now, medicines like SSRIs may help control that impulsivity and their compulsive behavior. 
Speech and occupational therapy can help prolong their function, and caregiver education and support groups are essential because these cases are emotionally devastating for families. Now the prognosis, the average life expectancy after diagnosis is six to eight years, depending on the subtype. And eventually this disease spreads to affect the language, movement, and even their swallowing. So if we go back to our patient at the beginning of the video, the diagnosis of FTD was made and the treatment like I just described has been initiated. But most importantly, the family has answers. This Alzheimer's Awareness Month, I want to remind you guys that not all dementia is Alzheimer's. Frontotemporal dementia affects thousands of families who often spend years searching for answers. So if you notice changes in someone's personality, their empathy, or their social behavior, don't ignore it. Get a neuro workup. Ask for imaging, advocate for testing, because early recognition can really change care, planning, and quality of life. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case. Share this video to help raise awareness for this condition, and comment if you've been touched by FTD or another type of dementia. And make sure you follow along all month, because I'll be breaking down different types of dementia so we can keep learning, supporting, and fighting together.